everyone, this is Wicked West Books. I am Meg West, and today I am doing a shout out to my mom. Hi, mommy. Yes, I still call her mommy, even though I'm 23. It's the only thing she answers to. I would try with mama, but she doesn't answer. Anyway, this video is going to be me just giving a shout out to my mom about her influencing my reading choices. I do count my mom as one of my biggest influences for reading. The biggest one, though, has to have been my elementary school teacher who started reading me Harry Potter, but once my mom realized just how good Harry Potter, she jumped completely on board and gave me some other options of things for me to read. So, my mom was not the one who started me reading Harry Potter. She gave me several other books that I love reading almost just as much, and I just wanted to share the four big ones that kind of stood out with me today. The first one is A Little Princess by Frances Hodginson Burnett. This copy is one that my mom got me. It actually came with a, I think it's a charm bracelet. It was a charm bracelet or a locket that she actually still is keeping safe for me, so I don't actually have it today. Instead, I'm wearing the necklace that my mom made for me. Anyway, The Little Princess is one of my favorite stories of all time. It is a story that I have had for a very long time. I have this copy and I also have this copy because when I was little it was one of my most favorite books ever. This book is a story about a little girl who goes off to a boarding school while her father has gone off to fight a war. While her father is alive, she lives like a little princess. She is completely spoiled, but still a such well-behaved child that she is loved by all, which just leads to her being spoiled some more. The conflict comes when her father dies, which leaves her penniless. Now, the headmistress of this boarding school cannot throw this girl out on the street because she is, I think, only 13 or around that age. So she has to continue having this girl at school. However, since she can no longer afford to be treated like the little princess that she was, they have to sell all of her things, make her live in the attic, and she has to work essentially as a slave in order to earn her keep, her room and board. And she learns that the best way of doing that, of coping with this is just to continue being a great child. She doesn't act out in any way and she just shows that if you keep believing that your life will get better, it can. The books that my mom gave me were the the Nancy Drew series by Carolyn Keene and the Hardy Boy Mysteries by Franklin W. Dixon. These books are actually written by the same person. He uses a pen name for, I believe it's the Nancy Drew ones, but essentially in the Hardy Boys you have two brothers who go along solving kind of not necessarily murders, but mysteries. And in Nancy Drew, you have the same thing, except that the main character is Nancy Drew, not a pair of brothers. They are both series, and they have lots and lots of books in the series, so, so you can almost never run out of stories. The next book that I want to show off is this very well-loved copy of the first three novels of the Dragon Riders of Pern series by and McCaffrey. This is a series that actually both of my parents read, but my mother is the one who told me about it first. And she bought me this lovely copy of the first first three books when I was in late middle school, I believe. And I have loved this copy and this these books right up here is more of the series that I have that I have a lot of the books actually she bought for me or she bought for herself and let me have when she moved out of state. So the Dragon Riders of Pern books, most of them she is responsible for. Dragon Riders of Pern is essentially what it sounds like. They are Dragon Riders and they are on a planet called Pern. Now this happens in the distant future where Earth has become inhabitable, so they've essentially, humans have essentially scattered throughout the universe. A 15 year journey at light speed away is the planet called Pern. Now they settle on this planet and they live there peacefully for eight whole years until they find a menace called Thread. Thread is a kind of a creature that eats anything it comes in contact with. It just eats and eats and 
mates, and that is its entire purpose in life. The only things that it cannot eat through is stone and metal. It can be flamed to kill it, and it can and it can drown to kill it. So they breed these dragons out of much smaller creatures that existed on this planet to the full-size dragons that they could ride, and they use these dragons to sear the thread out of the sky and save the planet to make it livable. It's a fantastic series. There are so many books in it, and it is a high fantasy sci-fi series that I would totally recommend. And the last series that I want to talk about today that I read because of my wonderful mother is the Stephanie Plum series by Janet Ivanovich. The only book I own is actually this one, Ten Big Ones, which I did find on sale. I think it was like a dollar, which is why I have it. It's a fantastic kind of murder mystery series that my mother and I and my sister would all listen to whenever we had long car rides to visit my grandmother, who also read. The first book is One for the Money, and a movie was made out of that was a fairly decent ad adaptation. Stephanie Plum is a girl who worked at as a lingerie buyer for a big company that went out of business, and essentially she finds herself jobless. Not having any other choice, she goes to her weird cousin Venny, who runs a bail bonds company, and asks for work. Very doubtful, he gives her a job to bring in a bad cop, and that is how her story gets started. And you just kind of have to decide if you like Joe Morelli better or Ranger. I liked Ranger. My mom and I disagree. She liked Joe Morelli. So those are some of the biggest influences that my mom has had on my reading. She has, of course, given me other books to read, but those are the four biggest ones that come to my mind. And I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you, Mama, for everything that you have done for me my entire life. I am so happy that you're my mom, and I miss you. My mom lives in a different state, and I haven't been able to see her since my wedding back in February, and even then it wasn't a very long visitation. So I just want to say I miss you, I love you, have a great Mother's Day. Alright, that's all I have for this video tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!